You see, Jesus died in our place so that we could have eternal life. This is how much God loves us, that he demonstrated his love by laying down his life. And Jesus died a pretty difficult death. It was, it was horrible. They did mean things to him. They pulled out his beard. Have any of you had your hair pulled before? I don't have that problem anymore. You know, people try to pull my hair and they can't get it. But you know, if you've ever had your hair pulled, especially you girls, you know, you've got that little ponytail in the back and it's so cute. And then you have a little boy who sits behind you and what does he do? <laughs> right? He's trying to pull your ponytail. And you're just like, ah, stop it. Right? Your brothers and sisters, they've done that before where they pull your hair. Listen, that hurts, right? It's painful. But look, they did that to Jesus, but they didn't pull his ponytail. They were pulling his beard out. They walked by and they were punching him. And some of you, you've been hit before with your brother or sister. And it doesn't feel good. But imagine this. Here is Jesus. And Jesus is sitting there and they're walking by and they're punching him as hard as they can. And Jesus never, ever, we don't read this in the Bible. The Bible doesn't say that Jesus ever tried to block he never tried to cover up. He never tried to run away. Jesus sat there as person after person came by and they punched him and they hit him and they ripped out his beard and they spit on him. I can't imagine that. And yet that's what Jesus allowed to happen to him to take our place. And then they put together this crown of thorns and these, these are not little, you know, just little prickly things, little sand spurs. These are long thorns and they wove together this crown and they didn't just set it on his head. They pressed it down into his skin. And so those little briars and those thorns were literally piercing down into his head and blood was pouring down his face. Then they gave him a robe and they led him out to a place where they were going to scourge him. To be scourged means to be beaten. And so they had these guys who were called lictors, and they tied Jesus to this post. And these lictors, these Roman soldiers, had this long club that had pieces of um, leather off of it. And then woven down in the very end of those pieces of leather were pieces of bone and glass and rock. And these lictors would stand a little distance from Jesus, and then they would take that whip, and they would throw it across like this, and Jesus is standing there, and those pieces of bone and glass and rock would come down and hit him in the side, go across his shoulder or down his back, and then because it's jagged, because those pieces of rock and bone and glass are so jagged, it would get stuck in his skin. And then those lictors would take that, and they would pull it back as violently as they could. And it would slice down into his back. And it would basically cut open Jesus. They beat him time after time after time. And literally, some of his insides were now showing. This is how much God loves us. That Jesus would allow someone to do that to him. And then they took and they gave him a cross. And this cross weighed somewhere between 75, 125 pounds, somewhere in that range. And Jesus is carrying that cross to the place where he's going to die. And you can imagine how weak he is because he's bleeding. You can imagine how weak he is because he's been up all night being beaten. You can imagine how weak he is because he hasn't had anything to drink. And so he begins to stumble and fall. And they get a guy named Simon. And they say, hey, you, come over here. And they call him over. And he has to carry the cross the rest of the way for Jesus. When they get Jesus to Golgotha, Calvary, or the place of the skull, they took and they drove spikes through his hands. And you know, you guys know, right, this is the sign for Jesus, right? You guys know that? And it's, it's because it represents the spikes in his hands. But you know, they probably put the spike right here underneath his wrist. Because back in that day, the wrist was still considered part of your hand. And so it went right there because there's a series of bones that goes across your wrist right there. And it would cause or it would hold his hand up. If they drove it through this part of his hand, it would probably just rip through. So they put it right through here. And it would cause his hand to curl up like that. 
There's also a nerve there called the median nerve, and they would try to hit that nerve if they could, and it would cause a burning-like sensation to go up and out his arm. It's kind of like your arm is just on fire the whole time. And so they drove that spike into his hands, and then they crossed his feet, and they drove a spike through the second metatarsal in his foot. And Jesus is now on the cross, and they lift it up using ropes and ladders. And there's a hole that's dug into the ground, and they lift up the cross, and they drop it down into that hole. And when it falls into the hole, the whole weight and gravity just, just drops down into the socket. And it pulls Jesus' bones out of joint. He is now hanging there, trying to get a breath. And every time he wants to get a breath, he has to push on the nail in his feet, arches back up against the cross to get a breath, and then go back down. Jesus does this for a couple of hours. And I'm going to tell you that if that had happened to me, I don't think I would be very nice. I don't think I would be feeling very good at this point. I think I would be really upset. I think I would be saying, you know what? I just, I don't think that you're worth it. I don't think that I should be doing this. But not Jesus. Jesus is hanging on the cross. And he continues to think about other people. He continues to think about us. And listen to this. Jesus says a prayer that just blows me away. He says, Father, forgive them. Now, we just talked about what, is, what it means to forgive. It means to treat you like you had done no wrong. And so Jesus says, God, forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. Forgive them. And then Jesus died. And because Jesus died, because he laid down his life for us, we can have life. We can be forgiven. 